How do I fast? Well, don't eat. Obviously, there's more to it than that, though. Something that we don't do often, or at least as often as we should, many of us don't, and that is to fast. The question is, one, what is the purpose of fasting? And two, what's the right way to fast? This was an issue that was brought up before Jesus with his disciples, and they came to him. Let's go to Mark 2.18, and they asked him, why aren't, you, why aren't your disciples fasting? They said, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they came and said to him, why does John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast. But your disciples do not. Look what Jesus' response is. He says, while the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast. There's no need to fast. Here's why. Uh, so long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. In other words, the bridegroom is there. Jesus is there. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. So the point of fasting is because there is a distance, there is a break between that person and, in this case, Jesus. When Jesus is gone, then they'll fast. He's right there. So the point of fasting is to bring about proximity, to bring about closeness. It is, in essence, denying the physical to gain something in the spiritual. You put your face, your focus, uh, your heart towards him. You humble yourself. You afflict your soul, as we see they, they did in the Day of Atonement, to afflict your souls or to humble yourself. That is to not eat. There is something that you're depriving for your from yourself physically that you would gain spiritually. But the question is, one, how then, if I know what it's for, how then do I fast? Is there a right way to fast? Well, let me just say this, a couple of things. One, do not try to fast for an hour or two. Don't fast by chance, by accident. It needs to be intentional. There is a purpose in fasting. When you fast, you are trying to gain proximity to Christ. So that has to be your attitude. A four hour fast or I'll fast between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. That's not really a moment of you depriving yourself because oftentimes we can go that long, not even thinking about it. And hey, that was a fast. Well, no. Now we know just like it, we all know that when you fast, typically something happens where someone may all of a sudden offer you something to eat or you might have all these different desires. This is you desiring desiring him, and so you are denying the world for him. The fast has to matter. It absolutely has to matter. When we see the Bible, we don't see four-hour fast or six-hour fast. or We see day at least day-long fast. There are some people who can't take those fasts for medical reasons, so we won't hold them to that same standard. Are you having to fast from everything, including water? I'll let you determine that you might need to have some water, especially in these hot summer months. But in terms of food, that's really where you're going to feel it. Fasting is, and don't make sure that you go and and drink liquids to fill yourself up to get rid of the hunger pains. Don't go out and drink a lot of water uh, just to be full of that. Don't go and drink a lot of tea. Uh, don't get things that are, have a lot of calories such as shakes and and, and slurpees and, and smoothies. No, you might as well eat them. You are defeating the point. The point is not to satisfy you physically, because that's how we live normally. Instead, satisfy the Lord. Now, there's an attitude that you have to have. This is how you fast. So now let's go to Isaiah 53, and let's see kind of what's happening here, and that'll help us understand. He says, why have we fasted? And you do not see, this is Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah speaking, um, and he's telling the people why God, why you have not seen. Why have we humbled ourselves and you did not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers. Speaking to the people whose fast don't seem to be working. Now, when you fast, the goal is not to fast to get something. Even though there might be a need for something, the goal is not to get something. The goal is to get someone. God has known. God knows exactly what you need even before you ask it. But the goal, the point is, is Lord, let me return to you. And I'm going to Stick on that point in just a second. But he says, behold, you fast for contention and strife and to strike with the wicked fist. Your ultimate motives are showing. You do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. So again, when you fast, your voice is to be heard on high. How is that done? By proximity. You bringing yourself closer to him in fasting. Is it a fast like this which I chose? 
which I choose a day for a man to humble himself. You need to humble yourself in fasting. Is it for bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast which I chose, which I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness? This is important to undo the bands of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor uh, into the house when you see the naked to cover him and do and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light will break out like dawn and your recovery will be spe speedily spring forth and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your guard. He's telling them how to fast, the attitude that fast, and don't oppress others in doing so. Have a mindset for even helping those in the meantime. Why? Because it's not about you. If there's ever a time that you could actually focus on helping someone else, is actually doing that fast. And again, as Jesus said, don't cover yourself up to make sure that everyone knows that, hey, I'm fasting. Guys, I can't eat right now because I'm fasting. Well, why would you tell anyone? Now you're making yourself, making it known. The fact that people knew that the Pharisees and John's disciples were fasting, someone told someone. This is not some something that we have to have our face all downtrodden and announce it. That's not the kind of fast that God's looking for. It's not a fast where you are trying to get recognition. You're trying to get Christ. You're trying to get close to the Lord. Now, look at this passage here. I think this is very important. This shows the attitude of how to fast, what should be on the mind and heart. He says, why then, this is Jeremiah 8, 5, why then has this people, Jerusalem, turned away in continual apostasy. This word apostasy is from the Hebrew word uh, shub, which means to turn or to return. They have turned away, or some, some versions might even use this word backsliding. It's only used of Israel, but the whole point is they have turned themselves away from the Lord. So if you are fasting and your heart is away from the Lord, maybe even unintentionally, you are fasting and you are on your computer all day, you're on your phone, you're watching TV, you're doing everything but focus on God. Is that really a fast? He says they've turned away in continual apostasy. They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I have listened and heard. They have spoken what is not right. No man repented of his wickedness saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course like a horse charging into battle. You are fasting and whatever the sin is, whatever the issues are, whatever things that are between you and God that are an affront to God, you're not even attending to those things. You don't care about those things. Those things, You have not repented of those things. Remember, and there are those that will say repentance is not an important thing in, in terms of repenting of sin. It is. Sin is a big problem before God. If sin is not a problem for you, well, then you got a problem because it's a problem for God. So it should be a problem. It should bother you like it bothers God. So you have not repented of your sin. You have not you, you've changed your heart or your mind away from the Lord. That's not a good fast. Some people fast because, well, I ought to. I haven't done one in a while. Let me go ahead and get one out of the way. Or the church is asking for a fast. No, your fast should be because there's something in you that you don't like that you want to get away from and you want to get close to him. That's why Jesus makes the point. When the bridegroom is away, then they'll fast. Why? Because I want to be closer. The disciples did a pretty good job of being on their best behavior when Christ was around. When he wasn't, then that's when trouble comes in. When we are focused on Christ, uh, it's harder, not impossible, but it's harder to mess up. It's harder to sin if you're focusing on Christ. The closer you get to him, the further you get away from sin. The closer you get to sin, the further you get away from God. And so that's why James makes a statement that we should draw close to him, draw close to him, and he'll draw close or near to us. So when you fast, your whole intention is him. Your whole focus is him. Your whole um, mindset is to get closer to him. I don't care about food. I don't care about the things. I care about you. And in that way, as Isaiah says, your voice is now heard on high. If there are some things that you need, well, God will take care of that. But that shouldn't be your point of focus in the fast. You are denying the food, forgetting about the physical, wanting to get the spiritual, even if it means, even if it means, and this is how you know that it is a true fast, even if it means you don't get the very thing that you're fasting, that you want, the underlying thing that you want to be taken care of that may have caused you to think about a fast. You've got bills, dude. You've got people that are angry with you. You've got all sorts of things that are happening. 
But in this fast, you'll find your true concern is going to be for Christ. Even if he doesn't fix anything, you're still satisfied. When you leave that fast, if you are not satisfied with your closeness with Christ, you might want to consider that to be an unsuccessful fast. You might want to fast it again. There's nothing wrong. And, and by the way, there is no limit as to how often you can fast. When you should fast, there's no right rule. We must fast on this day or that day in this manner. No, we just want to fast as often as we can to be closer to him. When you find yourself drifting away, fast. Amen. <laughs>